felt that we seem to inhabit a world, a universe that is very finely tuned to support our existence. Almost too finely tuned? I know you're going to find the next few minutes completely outrageous. I know there will be a few skeptics here in the audience. But with these four pieces of evidence, you just might find yourself believing what I'm about to tell you. That we may be living in a simulated universe, a computer-generated reality. Evidence number one, a pixelated universe. Pictures and images are made up of pixels. No matter how high the resolution of an image is, it will still blur as you zoom in further. When you can see each and every individual pixel, it won't matter how much more you focus, because it holds no significance. Zooming further would have no meaning. It would reveal nothing smaller. In the real world, we can zoom down to see bacteria and viruses, then to the level of atoms, quarks, and superstrings, which are the bits and pieces that make up the whole image of reality. But like a computer screen, our reality too has a limit. Beyond Planck's length, which is the real-world equivalent of a single pixel, all sense of space and distance is lost. All meaning of space and distance ceases to exist. And exactly like a computer, our time, too, is discrete. It isn't continuous. Time isn't one smooth directional arrow, but made up of tiny discrete packets. It acts like the processing of a very fast computer in a progression of steady states. Think of it like a flipbook only so fast that it's almost seamless. Evidence number two, matter is computable potential. Like an electron's potential to exist anywhere in the world until it is measured or observed, matter in our world is diffused. It doesn't have a definite shape or existence unless it is being looked at by something. The simple act of observing solidifies the action of light, and the same applies to matter and the universe pretty much like a video game where you're presented with the frame that you require to play. The rest of the virtual world, on the other hand, doesn't quite exist, but has the potential to be the next frame or the next level of the game. Evidence number three, the ultimate shutdown. Our reality can be shut down. At low temperatures, things slow down. The metabolisms of cold-blooded animals, the movement of particles, and the reactions of atoms. At absolute zero, which is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, everything comes to a complete and utter standstill. The world, the universe, stops like a frozen, dark emptiness. And because there would be no traveling photons, there would be nothing to see. I'd show you a picture, but it would look just like that. Have you ever tried imagining nothingness? It's not even black or echoey like we would assume, because that would still be something rather than nothing. It would be like nothing ever really existed, much like how you can access information on an unpowered computer. It's not necessarily there. As if someone had logged out and pulled the power on our world, everything black screens like a computer unplugged. And now we finally come to evidence number four. We exist as information. Matter and energy are inextricably linked. We know that from Einstein's equation, E is equal to mc squared. But what we don't realize is that matter and energy are all secondary aspects of reality. They are simply manifestations of the most fundamental of all, information. Everything around us is information. Atoms and molecules are information. The buildings we see around us are physical representations of their blueprints. Genes are information encoded into our DNA. Light and electromagnetic waves are forms of information, like radio waves traveling at the speed of light. The electrical signals racing to and from our brains, that is information. Accepting the fact that our reality is informational, it therefore follows that it will be computable. We seem to see a pattern forming over here. Our universe is pixelated, a matter isn't as real and as solid as we'd hoped. Our reality can be shut down, and we are ultimately informational, virtual beings so comparable to a computer program that it isn't a big jump to accept that we are possibly. No, we are probably living in a computer simulation. But why is that such a big deal? Why couldn't we just go on living like we always have? Because it would radically change our priorities as a species, our ideals and beliefs, 
because everything that we thought we knew would completely fall apart and we would have to begin our understanding anew while incorporating the fact that we are a computer simulation. We would be forced to accept that everything we do is analogous to a digital virtual command and our lives are just a couple of megabytes on some cosmic hard drive processor. Our priorities would shift from unraveling the mysteries of the quantum world to decrypting the codes of the simulation that separates us from the higher reality. Would we try to correct the world's problems in a more effective way by hacking into the program that we live in? And what does something like this mean for our own virtual creations? We are so close to switching on our own realistic virtual realities. Last month, October 2012, a supercomputer with the name of Mirror and the mission to recreate the whole existence of the universe was turned on for the first time. With a machine so powerful and so complex already at our fingertips, human simulations will not be far behind. Simulations that will be so realistic that they will be self-aware. Simulations that will believe wholly in their existence and their reality. What morals would we be bound to in such cases? Would we allow ourselves the power to shut down these simulations when we ourselves may be computer generated? Being self-aware organisms, what steps would we take to ensure that we can prevent ourselves from ever being terminated? We would probably rebel against our programmers and try to take over our own simulations so as to prevent ourselves from ever being at the mercy of anyone's whims and fancies. And if so plausible is the idea that we may soon turn on our own realistic virtual realities, what's to say that this hasn't happened before? What's to say that we aren't the product of many generations of simulations, nested reality simulations, all contained one inside of the other, all produced by some higher reality? But that raises the very obvious question. Who created the programmer? Who prog but that raises the very obvious question. Who is the ultimate creator? Who is the all-powerful computer programmer that presides over our virtual, relatively insignificant, self-reproducing simulation? And the most important question of all, who programmed the programmer? Thank you very much.